Hi, it's Jenna here at Big Spirit Studio, and today we're going to make pitch pot animals. Um, it's a project that we did on Saturday for the big grand opening, which was a super success. Thank you if you came by. Um, I'll share some pictures at the end of the video so you can see all the fun we had. Um, I did a mini workshop um, of pinch pot animals, and they came out really wonderful. We got some wonderful little monkey. You can see it's a pinch pot bowl. And his little brother made a monkey like him too. Look at that. This one has a spots. And we got a lovely little kitty that came through. You can see that? And I love this one. I think it's a sheep. I don't know. But I love it because it has this little tongue hanging out. How cool is that? So kids just make the most amazing things. It's genius. They're genius. I love all of them. But I don't get to keep them. Um, so what you're going to need for this project is um, some clay. And there's different kinds of clay that you can use. You can use traditional clay from the earth, which is what I'm going to use today. Um, but if you don't have a kiln or a way to fire it, there's some other options. You can use some air dry clay, which you can get at a craft store. You can also use some oil clay. They both uh, dry in the air and don't need to be fired, but uh, will be more brittle. And this one takes a long time to dry, a really long time to dry. Also can be messier because it is oil based. Um, this is super easy. The only thing again is that it's crumbly and so I recommend painting it with like a nice uh, plasticized paint like acrylic paint to hold it together if you care about keeping it around. Uh, some other things that you'll need is you'll need some water, bowl of water, um, and some slip. Slip is um, using the clay that you have and adding water to it. It helps also sometimes if you use dry clay and then reconstituting the water and it just makes this kind of like a paste. Um, and you'll need something to score with. So scoring, scratching little lines at the at areas where you attach the different parts of your animal. I like using a fork because you get four for one. Um, and then you can find some fun cool toys, tools to make lines and um, here's a knitting needle. Here's a piece of bamboo. Um, there's also, I have a clay knife, which is good for cutting. It's not sharp, it's great for kids. Um, a spoon, can be, the back of a spoon can be great for smoothing things out. Really anything, you can find a way to use it in clay. Um, I don't even know what this is for, but it's an actual clay toy. Um, and then you need some space that you don't mind getting a little messy. Clay is non-toxic, except for if it turns to dust. You don't want to breathe in the dust, so you want to make sure you clean up really well afterwards. So let's get started with our pinch pot. So you just make a basic ball. If it's not a ball yet, you can bang it on the table, which shakes the video, or roll it around. It doesn't have to be a perfect ball. And then you're going to stick your thumb into it all the way until you think you're about that far away from the bottom. And then how I say it to kids is then you're going to turn it into an alligator. So you go from tom thumb to an alligator and then you're just going to bite down all the way around your ball. And you don't have to do it hard, you don't have to squeeze forcefully, and you don't have to do it fast. It's a good thing to remind kids. Just go slow and feel the clay and the clay will tell you where it needs to be thicker or thinner and your fingers will, will give you information about that. So you don't have to be forceful. So I'm just Pitching around, I don't want it to get too thin because I still want to be able to shape it a little bit. And when it gets too thin, you're kind of there, you're done. It doesn't have much more play in it. So I'm kind of keeping it about that thick. And I think I want a little bit of a belly on my animals. So I'm going to take my fingers and kind of scoop on the inside like this, gently again. But if my finger goes through, it's okay. I can just take a piece of clay and flatten it out, score and slip, and fix the hole. That's what I love about clay. It's quite forgiving. So here's my little body for my for my animal, which I've decided will be an elephant because it's my favorite animal. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it to the side for a moment. And then I'm going to take my smallest ball or make a smaller ball. This one's a little bit big for me. So I'm going to take some off. You can just pinch it off and roll it into a ball. And I'm going to start making my little elephant face. This is where tools can be really useful. So I think I'm going to give it a little bit of a mouth, so just cutting through like that, and then I'm going to give it some eyes. And I'm just going to press in to give it kind of eye holes, and then later I'll 
add some eyes. There you go. And now we're gonna do our first scoring and slipping. So I'm gonna take my fork and on the bottom of the head where it will attach to the body, body, I'm going to score it. So that there's my Velcro. And then I'm gonna do it over here on my bowl where I want to attach it. I'm gonna mess it up pretty good without going all the way through. And then I'm gonna add my glue, glue and Velcro. This helps the clay stay together, kind of tricks the clay into thinking it's all still one piece. Then I'm going to take my head, I'm going to put it on the place where I want it to go. I'm going to support on the inside of the bowl and just press in. And you can press pretty hard. And then you can either smooth it down or let it have the look like two balls attached to each other. You can also add a little clay to the neck if you feel like it needs it. Oftentimes you'll do some reshaping. So there's my head attached to my body. All right, still looks a little funky. It's gonna start looking great, you'll see. And then I'm gonna make some ears. So I just tore two pieces off, kind of try to make them look somewhat symmetrical. I'm gonna do my scoring and slipping on the side of the head again. Score. Slip, slip, and then I'm going to attach my ears. So again, I'm pushing them in, just like that, and then I'm going to smooth it out so that it looks more like one piece of clay and it'll stay together. So even if clay is attached, if it uh, doesn't feel like it's the same piece of clay when it dries, it can come right off. So it helps sometimes to smooth it in. So there's my start to my elephant. And then I'm gonna make a little worm. Kids tend to do this automatically, but you're gonna take, you can take a piece of clay and you can either roll it on the table or roll it between your hands and make a worm, which I'm gonna use as a trunk. I'm gonna cut it, because that was a little long. I'll do my scoring and slipping right here. I'm going to stick my trunk on. And this one I'm definitely going to smooth on so it all looks like one thing. Oops, I went over my eyeballs. I'll have to redo my eye sockets. And I want this, this elephant to have a trunk up. And there you go. There's a little elephant head. Pretty cute. And I like to add feet to them. So there's two ways, well there's a million ways to do feet, but there's two ways um, that tend to happen. So there's adding them to the bottom so that the bowl stands up on its own like this. Or if you want the bowl to sit flat on the table, then you can add the feet to the side. Just like that. Either way works. And again, it's scoring and slipping. So I'm gonna take my last little ball of clay I made for myself here and divide it into four, because elephants have four feet. And then I'm gonna roll a fat worm. I'm gonna tap the bottom so that I have a place for it to stand on the table. I'm gonna do that four times. I'm really fast at this. You don't have to be fast at it. All right, then again, scoring and slipping to make sure it stays on. So I'm gonna delicately hold my elephant upside down. You might have to help your kids with this. Score my four places, add my slip. I'm also going to score the tops of my legs. And then I'm going to take my legs and squish them on, just like that. Kind of wiggle them right into that messy scored area. Wiggle them on, just like that. And flip my bowl over and let my animal stand right on those legs. Then what I like to do, I like to kind of push inside the bowl into the legs to make sure that they're really attached on. And there is my elephant bowl. Add a little tail. There you go. Pretty easy to do. So if you would like to have access to clay or have your kid have access to clay, check out BigSpiritStudio.com. Uh, my adult 
Wednesday nights we have clay available ability there. I have a wheel, I have kilns. Um, all of my Creative Explorers classes, which are my children's classes, the kids have access to clay at some point during the course. And this um, August, middle of August, I have a two-day workshop where you and your child can make um, a working ceramic fountain. And that's one of my favorite workshops to teach. Um, there's, n there's no more pride that I see in my daughter's face after she makes something than out of clay when it's a solid, fired, colorful thing and um, she just shows it to me and her face is just beaming. I think it's a great source of self-esteem and confidence and um, really want to make sure folks get, get to have a hand at it. So again, check it out at Big Spirit Studio and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.